Hey guys, it's Ryan and it's another Caledonia video. This time it's a little different though. I've had this idea in my idea bank for like a little while now and I've chopped and changed the idea and even outright dismissed it a few times. But what if I use this video to try and talk a bit about modern sectorial design and what if I talk about what I do to bring back Caledonia Highlander Army? That's right, it's another homebrew video because I guess I needed the excuse or well, I don't know. But still, anyway, the point of this video is if I was to ask to bring back Caledonia by Corvus Belli, why, I, I don't know, maybe I'd rank someone under the table or something, what would I do? This video will also talk a bit about how USARF and TAC also don't quite hit the mark of a modern sector. Before I start, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. So what is a modern sectorial and how do I define that? And how do I think that Corvus Belli defines that? Well, I don't know if they do and this is all based on feeling, but I think we can quickly spot it in a lineup. I also believe there are four informal categories for sectorials. This doesn't affect anything and I reckon a lot of people will categorize each sectorial differently or not even use these categories. So we have out of production, in need of a rework, Good, but a touch-up would be appreciated, and all modern. The obvious modern sectorials are basically those released as part of N4 or received major reworks in this time. So while Harima Winter Force and White Banner do just miss the mark being released at the end of N3, but they're basically there. So modern sectorials are the following. Starmada, Cosmoflot, Corregidor, Military Orders, Morats, Steel Phalanx, Assassin's Baram, and now Bakunin. So besides getting a new box or rework from Corvus Belli, what makes a modern sectorial? Well, a few things. Numbers of units being about 22 or more, including units from within other factions, such as Orcs and Frontovlicks, but not including faction doctors or rebs, since those are basically in every faction in the sectorial. It's basically a free unit. They also tend to have a tag or tag-like thing in the sectorial that was probably added in a recent rework such as the Chernobog, the Gator, the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, or the Stigmata. They also now cover much more of the roles in the games, but not all. Ariadna now has a tag, but not repeaters or good hackers. Military Orders now has a hidden deployment, Min-6 Skirmisher, which, I mean, was the Order Sergeant before, but now they're properly Skirmishers. Starmada has more disposable ARO pieces, and skirmishers as of the Adepticon update. Bakunin and now Nomads have increased Lieutenant prowess, NCO and disposable HP. They're still pissed in a firefight, but they're getting there. Hack now has McMurrah for some reason. Not sure why, but yeah, also a, a new tag. I'm not here to slag Corvus Belli and call this power creep, but I think despite a few stinkers, we are in a very healthy period of the game. Their fire teams tend to be pretty decent and loose, Cosmoflot with the Rock Oak Core, MO and the MO Core with Corsairs. Corregidor is a little mixed but odd, and there is flexibility there. McCoonan has the Gun Nuns, and then Steel Phalanx is wild. Morats don't even know what Impurity is because they're the fire team poster children. Heavy Infantry and Heavy Infantry Equivalents is also something we're seeing a lot more of, including Silhouette 5 models with the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, the Caracot, and the Bad Sepulchre, the Observant Penitent. Steel Phalanx, Cosmo, and Starmada got shit hot heavy infantry like Aduros, Patchers, and Secudroids. Ayers and Boktars keep confusing my autocorrect and are really nice. Diablos play devils on many tables, Hopolites hop onto shelves, and Evaders just plain evade, playing fair with the point system. All in all, most Sectorials tend to have at least three heavy infantry these days, even the not very HI heavy ones like, you know, the Assassin Sectorial. Military Orders has six or seven, losing the Magister Knights, but instead gaining Mendoza and eventually Kyle, and Bakunin and Assassin's Baram have gone from two to four. New specialists and rules combinations are now a thing. Pandora is a weird hacker doctor. The Stigmata is a hacker tag. The Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, while not as wild, is a chain of command pseudo tag super heavy infantry thing. The final thing is that a sectorial tends to have two clear halves when it comes to fire teams. This will be important later. It is very obvious with Bakunin, with the gun nuns and the discord mods, less obvious with the Rockots and Frontovlik fire teams, or the Military Order versus Knight Hospitaller fire teams, Thorakai versus Myrmidons, and the Corregidor versus Correctional, and the Gulam and Baram for the other modern sectorials. So yeah, to recap, Super Heavies and Tags, Heavy Infantry and Heavy Infantry Equivalent, 
fairly fleshed out rosters and roles, strong fire teams, new design spaces, and a sectorial of two halves. So I mentioned Caledonia, but they're not alone at all. Usarf and Tack are specific ones I want to highlight here, and of the three, I think Usarf might be the most likely to get a rework, but is also the most in need of one. So how do they compare to the new sectorials? Well, Military Order, Winter Force, and Corregidor have 24 profiles from the criteria I mentioned earlier. Cosmoflot, 25, and Bakunin and Stormada, 28 each. Tack and Murph have 17. Murph is propped up by four Mercs, Usarf has 15, and Caledonia has 14. Yeah, it's not good for ye old Ariadna. Verd is also in a similar boat, ha, as Caledonia. Verd at least gets Pan-Oceanian rims, such as the Billeteers and Peacemakers, so there's more options overall, but they're still seven units shy of military orders and Svalharima. So what about heavy infantry and tags? Well, Murph has a tag, it's an anaconda, which is technically a tag. We have the Blackjack and the knockoff Blackjack, so at the very least, that counts. Ariadne is sort of the original home of the Silhouette 5 heavy infantry after all. Even Caledonia can submit Cameronians as its homework. It gets a basic pass, but it's not really the same thing. So how about flesh out rosters? No, we we cannot firmly do that. Usarf is famously just guns, grunts, and bikes. Tack is camel, guns, and more camel. Oh, and dog warriors. Caledonia's is warband smoke, and I guess big damaged guns. Just not good shooting, big guns. The other sectorials at least have some source of visors, let alone multi-spectral visors. What about unique specialists? Well, Tack has Ermandinos and Usarf has Bike Harrises or, or Grunt++ plus 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 in the midfield. Caledonia has the SAS, but while exceptionally good, it does not break the mould. Strong fire teams. How about that? Well, I don't want to talk too much about this two sectorials that I don't know, but Usarf is not great in this regard. Passable, but not doing well. Tack I hear is carried by the veteran Kazakh, which I mean, yeah, you don't want one model carrying a sectorial. Finally, Caledonia. Are the fire teams good? It's not great. It's like a solid 5 out of 10. Again, it's just passing marks. The options are good enough, but the purity sucks. So what about two halves? Well, Tack has the veteran fire team and the line Kazakh fire team which have good options but it's that plus some biker duos or Ratnik Harris. Usarf is the same with the Usarf and Grunt fire team. Caledonia has the Volunteer, Greys, Wolvers, Galwegian and Scots fire teams. Really nice but it's not really cohesive so rather than being two distinct halves it's more five bits strewn about. But could we fix this? I think so, and that's the purpose of this video, as well as bringing back Caledonia, because Caledonia could be done with like 10 new sculpts and bang, there we go. Yusaf and Tack aren't beyond saving either. There's a lot of ways to beef up Yusaf, focusing more on grunts and minic men, and expanding adjacent units around them, or splitting the army into more of a professional and irregular part like the heart cases and mine layers. Bringing back both the firepower and defense to Ariadna. Help giving them wolvers since they're in the middle of an antipode offensive and we'll probably see an increase in them. Anyway, Corvus Belly has ripe ground here. Tack has a lot of play with being the industrial and political heart of Ariadna. We've seen Rodinia flex its muscles with Cosmoflot. Let's see what it can do on the home turf. Murph ha having two dudes to scrape together would be surprising for me, but Rumblings and Dev Leaks say they might have something to offer. So what about Caledonia, the entire point of the video? Well, let's get on to that. So background, the lore and the fluff. See, Caledonia has two sides to it already. The professional army versus the clan back regiments. The Justicar versus the clan leaders. The constant threat of rebellion against Rodinia. The extent they killed the Scots guard commander because he was good at his job and now with Cosmoflot, they've been flung into space with Wallet and the ever effective SAS. So my plan is to have a professional versus clan divide. So who's who? Well, for professionals we have Greys, the wild but consummate professionals, Wolvers who have nowhere else for them, Volunteers, SAS. Cameronians use the army to get experience so they can find a place in the clan, and finally Isabel, who is the best of the best volunteer or something. So who's in the clans? Well, sort of Wallace. He's hated by a lot of them, but he also beat a bunch of their asses in a duel, so they've been humbled. He's probably considered professional, but he hangs around a lot with the Galwegians. Catarans are former soldiers turned clan killers. Galwegians, while an official regiment, is often in companies and squads with their cousins and kins. And finally, Mormers. Mormers are the Scottish equivalent of an earl and somewhat lead clan, so they're firmly in the clan bucket. 
So what's my plan? Well, it's to add these two elements and then rework the fire team so that they're a bit more cohesive within themselves, but there's still some overlap. Greys and Wolvers can be my go-betweens as one is professional but works with more mares and the other is a dog warrior who is a part of the professional Caledonia Highlander army. So going forward to make New Caledonia a reality, besides these two halves being defined, I also wanted to add some units to the sectorial and completely redo the fire teams. So the goal is to get 20 plus units, more coverage of Caledonia's weak points, but keeping within some limits. I'm also going to add some mercs since my fluff explanation is that in war you need some mercs and Caledonia has a good amount of bartable goods. My goal is to not make Caledonia just a different Cosmoflot, so I wanted to give it unique stuff. So first off, no Silhouette 5 Super Heavy Infantry, or tags. That airs into the high tech stuff that I don't think Caledonia can get, and also we have dogs. But we're getting some other nice stuff instead. Let's keep it on theme for Ariadna, so no true full hackers. Let's leave that to our character. I'll allow partial hackers though, but also no repeaters. Someone described Caledonia to me as warband smokes and massive damage if you hit, which is pretty accurate, so that's going to be the main theme. There will be a lot of big guns, but they're not always going to be getting pure or going to hit. MSV is going to be tight, probably no more than three units, the Uxia, a new grey or mormer profile, and a new unit called a head stalker. We're going to add some new lieutenant options too, and another choice for it, instead of just Wallace or some two decoy volunteers. But no chain of command and Wallace at the same time. I think with these rules we can move into the new and upgraded units. So as part of the new Caledonia Highlander army I'm going to want to retouch some of the existing units to bring them up to snuff with some newer units. A couple don't need it but some nice options and some common sense will help bring new options into the sectorial. Nothing too wild, a couple of snipers, missile launchers and some T2 weapons. The really wild stuff is in the new units. Also shout out to Cavrion who made some of these suggestions. Scott's guard are basically tidying stuff up. We're going to start with combining the forward observer and non-forward observer profiles. So the shock marksman lieutenant is going to get forward observer and NCO. As such, this will mean it will get a 1 point discount for its troubles like Moira's and the other NCOs and Lieutenant combinations. We are going to alter the Camel units to become one use, but we're going to give them forward deployment plus 4 inches just so they can be a little more aggressive or defensive in a better position. We're going to swap the Forward Reserver SMG to a Paramedic, keeping the NCO. This will cost us an additional point, but it means we'll have a new type of specialist in the fire team. It does make a cheap profile slightly more expensive, but I think it adds a lot of utility to the unit. Finally, we're going to add a new T2 Marksman Rifle exclusively to just Caledonia. It's not going to have a specialist version, but it will have both a fire team option and camo for 30, 35 points respectively. This gives us another type of gun to leverage and shows that the Caledonia is the army of hitting hard. The Mormer is a boring heavy infantry change that me and Cavrion went back and forth on and for simplicity I didn't want to do much. It's a little conservative but it's an improvement. Probably because I'm pretty precious for more mares. So we're going to swap Dog to no wound in cap and increase all profiles by 2 points to, for this step up in durability. We're also going to add an X-Visor and MSV Shock Marksman Rifle Profile for 40 points. This is a little more of a defensive profile and it's also a camel hunter and just kind of shows the wealth that more mares can flex. So we could make the more mare two true wounds but then it would just be a better sold at. We could have also done some transmutation stuff and it's very close to being on theme for Ariadna's tough heavy infantry but he's not Silhouette 5, so I think No Wind End Cap is imperfect for a flashy but not professional soldier. Greys get a little more of a different treatment that I'll talk about in a second, but what we're going to do regardless is add a Lieutenant plus one order option for Greys, so now that Caledonia, which has some good NCU options, another good Lieutenant we can choose from, so that's always a good thing. We're also going to add a T2 sniper option, the grenades, and of course a heavy pistol. Why? Well, I wanted a defensive shooter option to get used, and he's an okay shooter. He's a hard-hitting one too, damage 16 T2, but only ever burst 3 at most, so it's not a bad weapon, and will crumple any soft targets. And any hard targets will need to take cover or go down as well. Greys are also dope solo, and with smoke grenades, the greys would be a fun sniper solo to pick stuff off. Also for fun, this profile is going to get climbing plus. 
So now for this stat line, we could do a similar thing, swapping Dogged to No Wound and Cap and give up Martial Arts for like three points across the board, but that's a bit boring. But what if we give them Transmutation? The Greys are known for their Dogged last stand, and you can be sure you can do that with Dogged, but what if they got mad? So yeah, the health view option is pretty similar to the original craze, except we get Martial Arts 1 and Whip 13 alongside the Transmutation. The quote, last stand mode is quite different. CC goes up to 24, Fizz goes up to 15, Whip and Ballistic Skill drop to 12, they gain Berserk, they drop the damage, but their Frenzy becomes impetuous and they gain Martial Arts 3. When you're about to die, you're going to take people with you. I was tempted to give it Dogged and Berserk plus 3, but no, that's getting a bit much for a 25 point minimum heavy inventory. Anyway, I like this change, and maybe if we were to redo Caledonia completely, I'd maybe do this for Wolvers, give more mares the 2 wounds, and give Greys NWI or Dogged. But I like what we've got here. Pavel is going to be added to Caledonia. Why is he here? Well, his dad's Scottish, and he's sort of torn between two worlds. Maybe even he's a double agent here. Anyway, we're adding him for a different type of camo, and plus McManus is a very Scottish name. Wolvers are a little one. We're going to add missile launchers to Wolvers for no reason other than I believe that Grenadiers should get a missile launcher, and it gives us an ARO piece with two true wounds. Yes, it's going to be expensive, but it might be nice in a Harris. Wallace, okay, so what if we got Chain of Command? But twist here, what if it's on Wallace? Or well, his non-lieutenant profile. So I mean, when your lieutenant dies, Wallace takes over. So the small balance issue here is that he's a whip 15 specialist, which is only really a hack, combined army, and a left thing. Do we allow this in Caledonia? I don't know. I think we could do chain of command with whip 13 if we're really bothered by it, but 35 points and a character, I, I think it's fine. To save points, we'll drop inspiring leadership from his chain of command profile and only keep it on the lieutenant. Finally, Yuan Yuans have a lot of beef with Ariana, but I reckon if you funneled some guns or T2 to them, they'll shoot whoever you want them to. Not only that, if I was to make a parachutist for Caledonia, it would basically be a Yuan Yuan or a Galwegian with parachutist. So yeah, perfect for Caledonia. Next up we have the new units, a bunch of various different options, both solo and for fire teams, to add to Caledonia and give us some nice, solid new options. Right, so the Partisans, Resistance, Territorial Defence Force, I'm not entirely sure the name of these, but basically these are people who are similar to hard cases in lore, in that they are those who have taken up arms to deal with an occupying force, except it's actually here, unlike the hard cases who are just cutting about. The goal of this unit was specifically a cheap light infantry for all territorial armies of Ariadna and specific loadouts for those armies. They're similar in vain to Libertos, but they're cheap and a little different. They have BS 11, Arm 1, Min minus 3, Stealth and Mine Layers with Shock Mines, their basic root bumps with light shotguns or rifles, which I think are nice additions for cheap irregular orders. We have a few of those, but these are more for fluff than anything else. So unique profiles. I wanted to lean into what each Sectorio is good at, so USARF gets 4 deployment plus and a heavy flamethrower, as there will be a lot of them cutting about in the antipo defensive. Tack is going to get more decoy, camo, and better mines, so they can lean into camo and sandbagging. Finally, Caledonia is going to get a T2 light shotgun for basically drops on defense. Nothing exciting here, just additional things for around 5 to 9 points you can take instead of a mule. So what if we smush Frontovlik, Scots Guard, and Lugarus together? Well, we'll get the Caledonian Volunteer Signals. Realising that not everyone wants to serve in the arse end of nowhere, and in fact Caledonia has some pretty smart cookies. What if we train them a bit better, and with the help of nomads and left delegates, although not at the same time, we can emphasise asymmetrical e-warfare and a way to buff Ariadna and Caledonia. No full hackers, that was my rule. That's Isabel's thing, and no deployable repeaters, since that's also not an Ariadna thing. But I think a killing hacker device and a bunch of hackers with upgrades is where Ariadna's hackers can be. So more details on the profile. What are the stats? Ballistic skill 12, whip 13, arm 1 with an X visor, courage in min minus 3. Yep, it's similar to a frontoflick and a Lugaru, but that's what they're meant to be. 
They're also meant to be good volunteers, so they'll be linkable with them and count as volunteers for fire teams. So if you want to use a light infantry fire team, that would be a BS-15 min minus three shooter with low wounds and armor with some okay options. x visor and the hackers show that they're meant to be the high tech side of this new Ariadna army. So the two profile sets, the fire team options represent your former volunteers in Scots Guard who join the signals to work with others and your camo one use forward deployment plus four to represent your former SAS, Cataran and infiltrating volunteers who joined slash were recruited for their experience. We'll deal with the non-hackers first. We have an AP rifle, light shotgun and blitzing for 21 points, which I think is a solid base for backup shooter. Not going to be doing much, but if you want to shoot something with the HMG that isn't shooting, then I think this will get some use. The AP Spitfire is our SWC weapon, which I think is perfect for this light infantry. I know volunteers have HMGs, but I feel like if you want bigger guns, you're going to take less good but cheaper options. I feel like a heavy rocket launcher option here would be good, but we have a fair few defensive options forming now in Caledonia. Now for hackers. They all get boarding shotguns with adhesive launchers as a very much hit and run surprise. They brick the heavy infantry and glue the medium infantry before running away. Not really a gunfighter, but can shoo away skirmishers and assassins with it. We have four profiles, one with a killer hacking device, which is a very basic device that can kill other hackers or hide in marker state. We do get Surprise Attack minus three, which I think make it a really nice hacker assassin, but it's likely just to get wrecked by a Trinity in return. I think it's a nice piece to hunt cheap, unarmored, light infantry, six sense hackers. Yeah, they'll ignore your stealth and surprise attack, but they're likely to go down to a good hit. The other three profiles are with Oblivion, Total Control and Carbonite, one for each program to shut down the midfield and Total Control attack that makes a play. I'm also tempted to give all these zero pain or spotlight as well since it's basically a better reset and a face-to-face -face option. I'm going to do the images after the script and recording so I'll probably be adding zero pain. Really the goal of this unit is to add a new specialist to the volunteer and great fire teams and a new midfield threat. Headstalker. So you might think this is an edgy name but this is the name for a Scottish gamekeeper. Stalker probably being similar to what they do to track deer and grouse and head being as in in charge not as in a person's head. I'll be frank the name came from a quick google search. I assume there are a few hunting estates in Ariadna to be honest so the logic behind this unit is I wanted another medium infantry, it was going to be a biker but I reworked that idea. I also wanted a solo piece and I wanted to focus on snipers so this is the combination. It's also a bit of a souped up cataran but it's an experienced wilder and not a regular part of the Caledonian army. Probably brought to combat by a local mormon. He's used to hunting the big antipodes or keeping them back from hunt locations, so he's got a very big gun with MSV and camel minus three. I've also added some antipodes to him, which I think give him a sort of disposable attack piece and man traps because he hunts things, so he'll need traps. So the stats. He's medium infantry, irregular, BS 13 and Fizz 13 for surviving in the midfield, arm three for a nice hard to kill piece, MSV1 is the absolute max for Caledonia and is only on BS2, so that's not breaking the bank. He's got Stealth, Camo, minus three, Surprise Attack, minus three, as your ca standard Camo sniper nonsense. We're also going to be really powering him up with Ballistic Skill Attack AP, because, yeah, I mean, Ariadna has Dragon, so AP plus T2 on a Burst 2 sniper is not overkill. Profile is basically the aforementioned T2 sniper, Man Traps, Heavy Pistol, and a CCW. So that's a damage 15 AP T2 sniper on min minus three MSV1 and an AP plus shock damage 14 heavy pistol for warbands. It's a nice neutering piece. You can take either one or two or no antipodes with a peripheral control so they can run up the field after he snipes something from the drop zone. I was going to add something extra to the two antipode profile to represent the whole antipode triad main thing but I decided against it. Although saying that something like six cents or dodge plus three for the three of them might have been interesting. So rather than a big silhouette five heavy infantry we do want something else big. I wanted a motorbike in Caledonia and originally was based on the Scots card but I wasn't happy with that so I moved it towards a dogged heavy infantry and a focused on more solo attack. So this is the Scots Dragoon a motorbike heavy infantry. Yes, I know that's a military orders thing, but I think they can forgive this pale imitation. My vision for this model is 100% like a grey or a Scots guard chilling on a quad bike. Profile wise, he's impetuous but regular and unhackable, which means he can take cover if need be as part of the bike change. Motorbike and smoke grenade launcher for equipment, and he's 6'4", which is standard for Ariadne bikes. He's BS skill 13, so the smoke is semi-consistent and dodge on 12s, which is okay. 
Whip 13 for that one, Specialist Profile, Arm 4 and Zeo BTS as this is a beefy Ariadne Heavy Infantry. We also have Dogged to give him some more survivability. What about specific profiles? Well, one Specialist Profile with a Boarding Shotgun Panzer Faust for the Observer for 24 points which I think is a nice fast Specialist. A T2 Rifle like Shotgun Attack Piece or an AP Spitfire Gunner which with BS-13 and Min-3 might be one of the better solo gunners in the faction. But yeah, it takes a similar role to Dogs except he can fight his way up the midfield instead of just smoking. Ku Kalein. Right now, here's the fun one. I wanted a character grey like Sora, but like really good. So who is Ku Kalein, veteran of the AEA? Well, the name is a moniker. He was a valuable part of the Ariadna Expeditionary Force, assistance on Paradiso, and had a reputation that he would just not die. So he's taking the name of the legendary Irish hero or demigod. He's heavy infantry, of course, and you know that he is regular and hackable. Why? Well, model-wise, this is going to be pretty much a standard grey, but I think it would have a pretty nice set of cyber limbs with a nasty blade in one arm and one handing a Mark 12 or heavy shotgun in the other. Maybe even some tactical dead Morats to show how tough he is. If you're wondering how he got the wear, well, O12's got you covered, chummer. Stats now, he's CC 23, BS 13, Fizz 13, Whip 12, all standard grey stuff, but a little better CC. Now, Arm 4, which could be higher, BTS 3, since he has some O12 granted cyberware and two wins as well. Two true wounds are only because he's a character and he looks like he belongs more in Night City or Seattle in the Sixth World than he does Ariadna. He has Courage, Terrain Total, Stealth and Frenzy, they're all pretty standard. Min minus three and Ballistic Skills Attack Shock make him a good shooter and an upgrade over the grey. Veteran in number two means he's good to be around on his own and can at least work on his own and avoid isolation. Which is also big for a hackable heavy infantry with no real support. So what do those cyber limbs give him? Well, they give him Martial Arts level 3, which is a damage 15 DA CCW from the wrist blade and super jump to show off his nice new legs. Profile wise, he has a fire team option with a Mark 12, smoke grenades, heavy pistol and DA CCW. Why? Well, I wanted a gun that wasn't in the Grey's regular arsenal, so I went for this, especially since it's not an SWC weapon, with no special ammo but big damage. Smoke because all Greys have it and a heavy pistol to deal with warbands. We have a camo 1 use with forward deployment plus 4 as it's a bit of a theme, with a heavy shotgun too because why not bully midfield stuff. Damage 15 AP on 19s with min minus 3 and surprise attack minus 3 is not going to be fun to deal with. So yeah, a big power wild card, solo piece to help out fire teams or just kill stuff solo. The Dotar Fergach, or Angry Doctor, is basically what if Ermandinos are doctors and instead of Buri they got Medichem. Why? I think it's a fun concept. So the fluff might be that doctors attached to a desperate Caledonia assault got boxed in by Morats or Shavasti. Maybe even some Krakot renegades out there. And they see these doctors fighting valiantly, doggedly to save themselves and their patients, laying down suppressive fire, maybe even going hand to hand to hold off the attack. It's it's dire. The crackouts see this and go, you know, what if we give these humans some of the drugs and let's see how they get on. So they threw some over and the doctors decided, I will not, and a bit of smart self-medication later, and next thing you know you have a regenerating, dogged, or even totally immune, very angry doctor. So yeah, it's a doctor with a medkit, CC21, APCCW, impetuous smoke, chain rifles, rifles and boring shotguns. I could give them Berserk or Natural Born Warrior, but I didn't want to go too ham. Medichem will help. It's got Fizz 13 so it can slap in melee and reliably get smoked down. Finally, I've added a non-fire team option where we can get a little helper bot for burst 2 in melee or some ranged healing. We could also go a little further leaning into Warman more, but yeah, heavy pistol, APCCW. CC21, classic warband stuff. More of a warband than a Jaguar is anyway. Murtar, Aristea and Dog Bowl Contender. I wanted another named dog, but maybe not like McMurra. So fluff wise, he's a Dog Bowl slash metal band member and a contender in Aristea. But he's also not a full dog warrior, he's actually stuck between the two forms, which is fairly unique. I want to talk a bit about his Aristea cards first, and these are a good source of inspiration. We have Berserk Charge, right, that's perfect for Berserk. He has Unbridled Fury, which I think is a thing taking for damage for music, taking damage for movement. I don't quite understand Aristea, so I feel like Dodge plus 3 and plus 2 inches denotes super agile well enough. He's got Super Jump and Fury, so that's Super Jump and Frenzy, obviously. Track sounds like Sensor, and I was debating giving him this, so I decided to let it slide. 
quenched. Now this one I'm not going to lie, Protheme was on the table until I saw that was Combined Army Voodoo Tech. If it wasn't, he'd have Protheme. Instead I gave him Regen, since I believe his corporate sponsor is a biochemical firm, which sounds pretty regeneratory. So that's a lot of skills. What about the rest of the profile? Well, he's a regular, of course, CC22, BS9, Fizz14, Whip12, Arm3, 2 Wounds, and Silhouette 5, as he's a go-between between between the Wolvers and a Dogface and Cameronians. He's got Religious Trooper, because he's mad and frenzy as per above, Total Immunity and Vulnerability Viral, since he is a Dog Warrior, and he's got Martial Arts 3 to represent his training as an Assassin in Aristea, as does the forward deployment plus 4 inches. Weaponry, he's got Chain Rifles plus 2 Burst, which yes, is cheeky and I could rob it to plus 1. He has Grenades plus 1 Burst and Shock to represent his career in Dog Bowls, which I believe is just very violent rugby. So this guy is basically able to punt a nade right at someone and bring them down that way. Finally, he's got AP plus shock CCWs, which I think will probably be some dope T2 claws. At damage 16, he'll tear most heavy infantry apart, and shock will take down the rest. He is arm 6, total immune in cover turn 1, but as soon as he is frenzied, then he'll be impetuous. Design-wise, he could have been impetuous from the get-go, but that would have been probably cheaper than McMurray if we'd done that. I believe it's a balance of cheaper total immunity in the midfield without cover, or more expensive with cover. It's an interesting idea, and I know another dog in Donia is a bit of an overkill, but I think this offers something new. So yeah, to match these new units, we'll probably want some new fire teams to support and match them. Hopefully now we'll see where a few units belong. Also, rather than five or six fire teams we originally had, I streamed them down into four fire teams of various degrees of cores, duos, and harasses. I think for Caledonia, we'll stay with one core, one harass, and total duos. I would be tempted by two cores, but honestly, nah, that's a little restrictive and silly. So the new fire teams are the volunteer fire team, which is pretty similar but incorporates the new signals, the professional fire team, which mentions Scots Guard and Grace together, the Mormir fire team, which is largely unchanged, except some new count adds in the wild cards and Galwegians, and finally the new clan fire team, which matches Galwegians and Wolvers together. Volunteer fire teams stay largely the same for now, except 112 is now count as volunteers, which is nice, I guess. It really doesn't change much from my review of them, just improves the fire team a little. As mentioned earlier, I want signals to count as volunteers and to act as our premium light infantry. This means we get a better shooting light infantry core if we want to do that. We do now have a more defensive option, but not pure, from our new grey T2 sniper rifle profile with smoke. I think it's very much a discount phoenix with two wounds, BS14 and damage 16 T2. It's something I won't personally try and attack unless I can really leverage mods or ballistic skill. The fire team can form a Harris or core with either signals or volunteers as base, with availability 3 greys to buff it out. You could do a signal, AP, Spitfire, Paramedic, then 3 cheap or 2 cheap, and a hacker to be a more aggressive light infantry core. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. Really for a core I'd probably do a Paramedic Volunteer, Signal AP Spitfire or HMG Grey, Sniper Grey, then Chain Rifle Volunteer. Harris wise we have a lot of options here with the Grey HMG Signal Hacker and Paramedic Volunteer. A very nice although discounted version of the Grey Warm Air Isabel Harris I like. The professional fire team is the combination of Scots Guards, Highlander Greys, as well as bringing the signals along for purity with Kukulain, Isabel and Wallace as well. This is the big daddy fire team, be it the duo, Harris or Core, with a base of highly professional Scots Guard, professional but dogged Greys, and the intelligence elements of the signals. The idea here is that if you want a pain trained or very active core, this is what you take. Everything here is either 2 wounds or min minus 3 and arm 2 plus, which is pretty bulky and defensive. You can take a grey HMG, signals hacker, Scots Guard paramedic, missile launcher and then a T2 shotgun grey for a very nice core of BS15 with min minus 3 or BS16 with 2 wounds. Harris wise we've got just so many options that that's what I wanted for the fire team. Just a good fire team to make a list around. It won't be cheap but it's definitely fun. The Mormer team is basically unchanged except I added Galwegians to represent a more clan based leader who is protected by two of his hardest lads. Maybe a bit cheeky but I don't mind since I probably won't take them over the greys. Wallace now counts as pure in case you want to bring him along and not sacrifice the plus 3 to discover, although that would be on 15s before mimeticism or impersonation mods, which m might be a bit much. Clan is our second big change, the second combination of two needlessly spread out fire teams for warbands. This joins Wolvers and Galwegians with the ability to form Cores, Harris and Joes, as per their old fire teams, but not Purity. That's for professionals. 
Dotter does count as four Wolvers and Galwegians, though, just to buff that fire team up a bit. This also means we can get a defensive or offensive core with an AP Spitfire or Missile Launcher. Mostly I say this has been really hard to shift defensive cores or a big pain train if that's what you're looking for in general because Wolvers are really brutal, especially in close range with that APCCW, Natural Born Warrior and Martial Arts Level 1. Yeah, you could cheapen it with Galwegians or make Galwegians better with a 2 wind Arm 3 BS-13 Missile Launcher or AP Spitfire, but I think you'll want Pure so you can get to that BS-15. Overall, alongside the wild cards, there's a lot of nice options here. Let's wrap this up with the wild cards. So it's largely the same as before, except Wallace now gets two tags. One for the professional fire team to make it a bit better up close, but this is mostly a fun change and I don't think it adds much to the fire team. It does get purity for the Mormer Harris for a cheeky, if expensive specialist on Whip 13 and Discovering on 18s. Isabel is staying the same except she now counts as a professional as well as she's both basically a volunteer and a signal. I'm still going to make use of her in a Mormer Harris since she's a great piece. Kadian remains unchanged. Kukalain is a wild card as well, but he will only be a BS14 min minus 3 shooter for 38 points in most cores, except for the expensive professional core going up to the BS16, which is great, but it's only a Mark 12. He's a really nice wild card and a very costly piece. And that was my video on how I'd remake Caledonia into a modern Sectoria. I hope you enjoyed the video, it was a lot of work making the graphics with designing the units, writing the script and putting this all together. If you like this, please remember to like it and subscribe if you did. It really helps me grow and know what my wheelhouse is. Thank you so much for watching.